We're going to work with Archangel Michael this week, and I'm going to tell you why here in just a moment. I have the cards here. They tell quite a story. One of the bigger messages that is coming through right now is talking about manifesting, bringing things into fruition. Now, we are coming up on the 1111 uh, energy portal. While we're on that real quick, if you want an 1111 reading, you either have to be willing to accept it after 1111, if you want a standard reading, or you have to book a live session. I only have a few of those spots left for the coming week. I'm going to be shutting that down actually this evening. And then I'm not sure when I'm going to open up live sessions again. Okay, here and there I can take a client, but mostly it's going to be standard readings. The standard readings you get at angelsouls444.com. For live sessions, as you might already know, you email me at angelsouls444 at gmail.com. So there's that out of the way. So about manifesting, how to bring this in. First and foremost, I think a lot of us are going to be realizing this coming week. No, they're correcting me and saying it's getting set up in this coming time. And we'll go on beyond this this week. We're realizing what we've been stuck in that's not working. Uh, things basically what it is, it's like things you have accepted because you're like, well, this is life. This is just how it's going to go. And then there's a sharp turn. There is a sharp turn coming in the next few weeks where you might reclaim an old dream, right? Or you could go, this just isn't working in my relationship anymore. I'm out. This just isn't working in my job anymore. I'm out. Or why am I hanging out with toxic friends? I'm out. That's not a new thing. That's been building up. And this is part of what is your spiritual growth going to look like? Okay. Um, what spiritual path are you going to take? Now, taking a spiritual path is not about saying, oh, how do I want to look to society? And a lot of people are doing that and they don't even realize they're doing it. Think about all the people who just go, hey, you know what? I think it makes me look really cool if I dress like what I think a shaman looks like. And then I'm going to go out there. My nose is tingling. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Michelle. This is Angel Souls. And sometimes when I start to read, my face tingles. Comment down below if you get the same thing, especially if you're psychic or a medium or whatever. If that starts happening. Or it could be allergies. I don't know. <laughs> Definite possibility. So, you know, sometimes people will choose something like shamanism because they think it makes them look cool. It makes them seem interesting. Um, this is a time where all of that inauthentic behavior is going to catch up with you. Now, for some of you out there watching this, this has to do with control. Whether you're controlling other people too much or you're controlling how you're perceived, you're contriving uh, an image of yourself or someone's controlling you. But this has bigger ramifications than just, oh, I'm getting controlled by my boyfriend. I'm getting controlled by my girlfriend. I'm getting controlled by uh, my boss. You know, it, it's, it goes beyond that surface level stuff. This is about what you showed. It's a soul path kind of thing, guys. This would be a time where you, you don't have to get an angel reading with me. I'm just saying, though, this would be a time to get an angelic message or work with somebody, if it's not going to be with me, that you want to work with. Work with someone who does a soul contract reading and is incredibly ethical about that because a lot of people can dive in and tell you anything and it can really get you on a path that's not for you. So this is kind of what's going on. This is why I'm saying that. This is a path correction. So if you have had some rough, now I'm not an astrologer, as I always say, check with your favorite astrologer, but uh, if you have had some rough transits, for example, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just been like long time, like over a decade, like what is even going on here? Um, this might be a time where you're starting to come out of all that or seeing the value in all the things that you've been through. Okay, so that's a lot of what's going on here. Again, it's going to be hard for some of you because some of you are waking up and you're realizing, man, horrible behavior has been so normalized in society that if you even try to set a boundary against it, people are going to come attack you for setting a boundary. It's wild. It's a wild ride. It won't always be like that. 2025 is going to be very, very different. Okay. But we'll get to that later. 
All right. So we're working with Michael. Why are we working with Michael? We need to clear these blocks away. We need to really be focused on meditation, bringing whatever your dream is into your mind's eye and looking at what's around it and even asking Archangel Michael, where are the blocks? And you have to be willing to hear the truth. If you do not want to hear the truth or if you're delusional, <laughs> you're saying I have no fear around my dreams or whatever the case may be, then you're not going to make any progress. If you keep kidding yourself, you'll never make progress. So as you look at these blocks that are around whatever your dream is, you might discover you'll feel it in your body. Oh, like I'm afraid of people rejecting me or I'm afraid I'm going to make a fool out of myself. Or I, I always say like I used to be in music. I started out very early in music, uh, singing, playing instruments, all that stuff. And then I went into theater and I really took that very seriously. I have a degree in theater and before anybody sits there and I've had, I've listened to this my whole life. It's like not even interesting anymore where people make fun of that type of degree. I just want to put it out there that it was an art. I learned every form of that art and it helped me do some of the deepest self growth I could have ever asked for. It helped me literally find my voice and not be afraid to stand in front of people and say what I have to say. It was a very, very, very beneficial degree, but, <laughs> but I always joked around and well, not joking, meant it. Like I'm not a performer. I love the arts, but I don't like the pressure of performing. You see what I'm saying? That's why this works so well. I could just sit, you know, here in my home, I turn on the camera, I do my thing. And then I put it out there and let it do what it's going to do. <laughs> right? So, um, this is the time where you might realize something like that. When you're getting ready to manifest something, you might go, you know what? I love, like in this example, I love the arts, but I am not a performer. Okay, so what does that look like? How else can you express your art without the performative part of it, right? So th there are some subtle things that are breaking down here as well. You might also have a realization this is coming up for some of you that someone from the past, now I'm not talking about terrible boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever. I'm talking about maybe a love partnership that never got a chance to bloom. If you're already with someone, this does not pertain to you. You made your choices. I'm sorry. I, I'm a hard A about that. You made your choices. Okay. <laughs> no. I, you know what? funny side thing that I'm just going to tell you guys real quick. Um, years and years ago, I was having a surge with angel souls and I was having more clients come in than I could handle. And I started going through them and I realized a lot of those reading requests that I was getting was basically people asking me how to, not just how do they get out of their relationship they don't want to be in. That's, that's one thing. You know, if you realize this isn't for me and I don't know what to do with it, that that's a whole other thing. This was more like, Hey, I don't like being in this relationship. How can I cheat and basically get away with it? Or uh, how can I, you know, who's really, oh God, and the questions about the soulmates. And if I told someone, no, that person's not your soulmate, them getting mad and say, I know they're my soulmate. Ugh, not everybody has to be a soulmate for you to be with them. Okay, sometimes you're crafting a whole new soul contract within this timeline. But you see what I'm saying? Like people get so hung up on that. When I started speaking out again, uh, uh, kind of against it, I guess, um, speaking out about that, ooh, that those reading requests dropped off very drastically. That and being against the twin flame concept. People, ooh, they hate that. Anywho, so I'm bringing that up for good reason. Do some self-examination. Is that you? Is that you? All right. So we're looking at our dreams, focusing on the blocks. We're getting them cleaned up so that you can bring this into fruition. Now, the first card we have out here is keep your eyes on the targeted intention. So here's how we do this. And then there are these, uh, these are supposed to be prayers. I'm not into praying to the angels. I reserve that for God. Catholics, you do what you're going to do, okay? <laughs> but this says, thank you, Archangel Michael, for helping me focus on my inner vision and intention. I ask for your guidance in releasing any fears or doubts, granting me the confidence and courage to take action toward realizing my dreams. All right. So if you need to go back to this video here, replay that, and kind of just close your eyes as I'm reading that out so that you can take that in. 
this is what's going on this week and beyond. It's time to leave. <laughs> I love how these cards tell a story. It's time to leave this unhealthy situation. Archangel Michael, parts of my life, excuse me, what parts of my life do I need to focus on more closely right now? Thank you for helping me hear your answers and for giving me the courage to make healthy changes in my life. Remember I said accountability and if you don't tell yourself the truth, you're not going to make any progress. It might be, hey, you know, if I don't feel good, if I don't like how my life is going, then I had better do something about it. If I don't feel happy, and I'm not sure what's going to make my myself happy, it's most likely that you gave up on a dream. Because at some point in your life, before life started getting at you, there was something you loved. There was something maybe you were very passionate about. And if you sit there and say, I don't know what makes me happy, it's because you gave up that dream as a possibility in your life. Here's the beautiful thing about this time that's coming up. You're reclaiming that. You're bringing it back in. It's good. It's a good thing. It really is. Self-respect. Oh, this is going to be that thing where you're like, you know what? I like, that, like I was saying at the beginning of the reading, I'm tired of being treated this way. I'm being, I'm tired of being disregarded or dismissed. Do you have a group of friends where everybody else talks and everyone engages and then you try to contribute and everyone looks at you and you didn't say anything weird. You weren't awkward or anything. They just don't, <laughs> maybe they're jealous. Maybe they don't want, they don't, I don't know. They just don't want you to engage with them for whatever reason. There are a lot of toxic people flying under the radar. And as I've talked about for years and years and years, this is part of that covert narcissism where society will say, well, there's nothing obvious on the surface that we could point at and say that that wasn't right. And then they leave that as the whole story where the real damage is going on energetically emotionally, mentally, right under the surface. That's a problem in our society. So the self-respect card is saying, hey, I see that. And even if you don't, it doesn't change the truth. I'm out of here. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Dear God and angels, thank you for helping me see myself as you see me. I love that. Through the eyes of love. Thank you for honoring and respecting me. Please guide me to do the same for myself and grant me the courage to speak up on my own behalf. I ask for your protection in all of my relationships so that I'm surrounded by loving and kind people. And that's what it is. If people, like when you speak and people act like you're invisible, get out of there. Or if you're setting boundaries and someone tries to make you feel bad about setting boundaries, number one, that's a hint of a narcissistic person, perhaps. Um, or huh, this is the thing that I have dealt with so often. Well, I had to do that at one time. Therefore, you have to do it. If you never set boundaries for yourself, that does not mean that I can't set boundaries for myself. Right? If you couldn't set those boundaries and take care of you, don't tell me I have to do, I have to suffer the way you did. Uh, or the taunting thing. I bet a lot of you get this within your family. Uh, you might get this even with coworkers or... You know, somebody who's like, oh, you think that's bad. How about this, this, and this? How would you like it if that happened to you? You know, because that could have happened to you. Or, well, wait until this happens. You know, I'm thinking in terms of like the example of someone who's older. And instead of being supportive of what you're going through and being empathetic, they're like, well, if you think it's bad now, you know, one day this, this, and this is going to happen to you. If it happened to me, it's going to happen to you. Meh. So we're getting better at discerning what someone's intention is is and what that energy is that's coming at us so this is an examination of the energy field okay what is around you what are you pumping into it where are there tears in your energy field field so to speak right a little tear where there's energy leaking out or something being able to come on in and that's something that over the years i've helped out with as well so you want some tips on that? I'm sure I have a video up somewhere, <laughs> right? Or the reading if you want to get a reading. All right. Admit the truth to yourself. Okay. And act accordingly. I appreciate your support and helping me face my feelings with grace and acceptance so I can be lovingly honest with myself and others. Thank you, Archangel Michael, for giving me courage and strength. This is going to be a little bit of a rough time for some people out there who are just in complete denial 
Uh, a lot. Oh boy, you enablers out there. You know, the ones that play devil's advocate because you think that makes you look like a good person. Oh, when someone's playing devil's advocate with me, I don't trust them. I think they're antagonistic. And I think they're playing a game. Or, again, they've given into some sort of conditioning that says this makes you a good person if you look at both sides of something. Nah. I mean, well, also to me, it can be a red flag that they don't have empathy. If someone's sitting in front of you and they just had a situation, I'm not talking about somebody who's just, you know, drama queen or they're just always negative and just want to pull everybody else down. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody who's been through something, maybe with another person. And they're like, man, this thing just happened. And I'm trying to wrap my mind around you. Well, what if they were having a bad day? Well, you know, she's going through a lot herself. Could it be that? Are you not being fair? Oh, that. No, that's someone kicking you while you're down. Wake up. That is someone kicking you while you're down. I cannot tell you how many times that's happened to me where I, like maybe I like gotten screamed at on the phone or whatever and I hang up the phone. I'm like, that was crazy. And someone's like, well, I, I think it sounds completely reasonable that they were upset about that. Well, then I hope it happens to you. I hope it happens to you times 10. How about that? Let it come back to you, right? So you're waking up to this stuff and you're realizing it's nuanced. Not everything can have a blanket statement over it. Nothing can really feel me. So that energy field, those are the kinds of things that get in there and it starts to color our, our, I, I'm seeing like little granules. Um, I don't know if those are cells, I guess it could be within our physical body, but it's kind of showing that it's like a light particle or something in our energy field. It's going to set that off a little bit. And now what's happening? You're pessimistic. You know, it could play out in a lot of ways where you just don't feel right in your skin. And it's just like, oh, nothing feels like it's getting better. Okay, those are the things that are opening up this week. And you're figuring it out. Use your imagination and you'll see the answer. Dear God, thank you for granting me the wisdom and creativity to see your miracles in new and unexpected ways. I gratefully and gracefully accept and appreciate your help. And then you describe your situation. So we're getting things straightened out this week. <laughs> so on, on, on one side of things, if someone has a lot of karma coming to them, it's coming. It's coming in hot, okay? Uh, whether it's good karma or bad. It's kind of rough in these videos because... You know, one of the things, I, I could sit here and talk more in depth about this all day. But social media, you know, people will lose patience. They will click off the video. They won't even watch it. Um, videos will get suppressed. I've talked about this many, 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 many times. I went from getting like 100,000 views on my videos. And then when that thing that happened four years ago started happening and I started saying all the words, ugh, I got knocked down and it never that never let me pop back up and resurface. So like, <laughs> it punishes you for having deep discussions. So I'll figure out what I can do around that. I don't know what I can do, but those are just the parameters of social media that I have to work with. So um, that's why I'm not going in depth in case you're wondering. Work with Michael this week. Make some time for those meditations. I have a crazy, crazy, crazy week coming up myself. Okay. I don't know how I'm going to get everything done, <laughs> but like, I'm still going to make my meditations a priority and I'm going to make things just so I can get through the survival part of things. I'm realizing that I have to prioritize my dreams so that I have the energy to do the other stuff. Otherwise, I'm just going to burn out and it'll get depressing and I, I won't want to do anything. So I have a plan in place. And that plan is to not, um, push myself too much in the morning. <laughs> I realize I'm not, a, you know, these days I'm not a morning person, but, um, you know, when I get through everything in the day, I want to make time for writing. I'm going to make time to work out. I'm going to give myself a moment to sit out on my porch and just enjoy this beautiful weather that we've been having. Then I will get to everything else. We need that rejuvenation. We need to be able to reset ourselves. We need to be, as I'm hearing now, we need to be building up our base. And that'll make everything else easier to handle. All right. So leave your comments down below. Thank you for liking this video, sharing, subscribing. 
Like I said, I've been shoved off into the corner and locked up. I feel like I'm like locked up in a closet or something. <laughs> or if my content's boring, that's fine too. I mean, you can tell me. I mean, that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I get it. I've been doing this since 2013. Maybe it's just old stuff at this point. But thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here. And I'm sending you all so much love. Take care. Thank you.